my mother raised me and my brother by herself. She had a little help from family and friends. Sometimes she had to work two and three jobs and still didn't have enough money. But she kept a roof over our heads, food on the table, and kept the utilities on. The only thing we didn't have were designer clothes, which caused another set of problems. But I want you to see how single parenthood really looks from people's firsthand experience. I want you to see how big of a problem it is for parents and children of single parent households. This documentary brings to light what single parenthood is doing to the human family, the role that is playing in the breakdown of human society as a whole. A few years ago, my wife joined Ancestry and wanted me to join as well in hopes that I would find my father. I wasn't interested though. About two years after she joined, then she convinced me. And by the year after that, she found my father. By the time we found him, he had been dead for two years. If I had joined Ancestry when my wife first suggested, theoretically, I would have found him a year before he died. That kind of played with my mind a bit. My father was never active in my life. And I'm not upset about that. I always wanted to meet him. I just didn't trust those genealogical things back then. So I missed an opportunity to meet him because of my distrust. But that opened up my mind to the idea of making this documentary. When I started this documentary, I thought it was a straightforward subject. Man, was I wrong. I had an interesting interview with my cousin Leslie's father. And he mentioned something that I heard before, but he talks about it with unwavering conviction and experience. So let's hear what he has to say. Right now, you have to understand one thing about black America. Society and this, this United States of America has taken a man so far out of the out of the picture he made a, a black man a criminal and a, and a just a violent person uh, and and they have put women at the forefront and this thing is almost at a at a point right now where you know men don't really they don't really they don't really matter anymore because women, black women, are leading the charge. In order to really understand this, you have to have have lived it. You would have to have been in it already. And see the thing about blacks in America right now, we made so much progress in 55 years, or 50 years, from when the time that blacks couldn't vote, had no rights, blacks had no rights, women had no rights, nothing. And then we made so much progress when we did get rights, we had to be slowed down again. So what, has, what happened is, Society made a black man look like a criminal, brought drugs in and everything else, made, and made it made it so that he looked like a dead beat and nothing but a a, a, a a real criminal and a hooligan. And they put women at the program. They made it so the black man couldn't be a father in a household. They put that woman first. My cousin Leslie and a guy who I wanted to interview named Frank gave me their perspectives from their experiences of what pop fathers played in their children's lives. I had the stats in my mind, but you can't refute people's experiences. Coming up, I mean, there were fathers there. There were fathers on Lima. It was a family-oriented mm -hmm. block. 
there were fathers that they were working. The fathers worked. The mothers were mostly at home. It was some families, a few, that didn't have fathers. But for the most part, they were fathers. Or some of the other kids that we were with were grandchildren. So they were there with their grandparents, but okay. the grandparents were together. Okay. So it was a lot of families, but a few of them didn't have. Okay. Cause um You just didn't see the dad. Yeah. Because they were working. Okay. Um well I will say that I won't I will say that as far as being fathers being absentee. I don't see that as being prevalent. I just want to point that out. In my experience, um, I've seen a lot of fathers that are, you know, really hands-on. You know, they're at the school in the morning, in the evening, uh, during the day, if, you know, they're called upon, or even if they just stop by. Um, again, you know, I don't, from my experience, from what I've seen, um, I believe it's true. Part of it's true. I believe that it has some validity to it, but from what I've witnessed, it seems a little odd to me, you know, because I see fathers, um, you know, but and I keep going back to it, you know, as far as the stats and, you know, what they say and what polls or whatever they did and looked at and census and all of that, I understand that, but, you know, what I've seen mm -hmm. in my- So know, how far back can you go? From your experience, what you've seen? Uh, 90s. The 90s? Yeah. Leslie and Frank both made good points, but I still wasn't convinced. I still believed that fathers were overwhelmingly not in the picture. One day, while in D.C. with my wife and my camera, I met a family that changed my perspective for good. From this point on, I decided to highlight how households are being affected when only one parent is involved instead of focusing on absentee fathers. All right, you can start. All right, hello. My name is Future Eli. My name is Future Bima. Yeah. Our last name, Liberian. middle name Liberian. Eli. My name is Future Bima. And this is Sony Bima. Hi, my name is Sony Bima. My middle name is Jack. I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to play football. Yes, I'm going to go around. A singer, a um, um, and a, and a basketball player, and a boxer. Tell them, tell them that you are tripping. Oh, oh yes. you can, you can get in too. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, they are. Uh, you want to stand next yeah, to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know we are triplets and stuff. Yes. Also, we have a, another brother that's um, and that's identical. In the house at identical. Home. At home, yes. That's the season. How old are y'all? We're all ten. Y'all ten. 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 Leos. Uh, they yeah. sing. Um, he box. Um, Are you the box? Yeah. He boxing. They all they, they, they all box. And, um, I grew up boxing. Yeah. Um, from Brooklyn, I grew up in Brooklyn along with DC. You know what I'm saying? So I, yeah. I understood what you know what I'm saying. And families from West Indies. Yeah. Along with Africa. We're from the West. Well, our parents are from West Indies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Our, our, our parents are from the West Indies along with Liberia. You know what I'm saying? So we had a. a uh, different situation going on, but you know, just, just living here, um, um, and we uh, been in the shelter, we been in the shelter, uh, future, future. Yes, oh, yes, so we've been through a lot of stuff. We saw a dead shelter. body before, nobody. Yeah. You think some of it has to do with because you're a single parent? Um, yeah, I mean, yes, also because they said that, um, it's a lot of, um, Situations going on, and then they, they're not. Because I used to work at Howard University when they came. When they came, I was working at Howard University, and um, they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't have. They give us no help. You know what I'm saying? And then, um, along with going back and forth and um, doing security for like my first security job was Little Bow Wow. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And um, and how a homecoming. Um, and then being with me because no one could watch them. My mom passed away in, um, a long time ago, and then she was. We didn't have a lot of help at all. And, um, so how did you end up becoming a single father? 
um, mom saw that it was a, she didn't really want girls or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so she didn't want girls. Um, oh, you have girls? I have boys. Oh, no. I have boys. She has girls. They have oh. sisters, like three girls or whatnot. Yeah, and then she okay. came on me and she was like, oh, what are you doing to me? You're like, what are you doing to me? And she was like, I, like I came to, uh, but I have uncles that's, 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 uh, multiple. Um, cousins that's multiple, but I didn't know that. And then she has multiple and she wasn't expecting that yeah. situation to happen. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I tried the best. Way I can to cope with a lot of things. Um, so how do you, know, you think your having, voice? That coming out, not not having my moms. You know what I'm saying? You know. So how do you whatever. guys feel having one parent? How do you do you miss having a mom? Do you want to have a mom? They have a mom. They have a mom. We have a mom, but our mom was a little. So do you feel? Uh, do you feel a little indifferent that you do have a mom, but it's not your biological mom? Yes, I, yes. Uh, your mom's yes. around now. We have a mom, you know but saying? our mom is not the one that, it's not the person, it's not the really person that's there for us all the time. Our father, our father is the only one that's there for us all the time. Because when it's like, when it's like a lot of things happen outside, like he's there to help us and stuff. Like, he help us with some, he help us with important things and stuff. He helped us with our important things and stuff. That's why he helped us to, um, do sports and stuff. He helped us do our homework and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too late to be shy. You on the camera now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. That's um, the first one. That's so my dad been around me for a long time. His name is Sony. Um, his grandmother died a long, t a long time ago because. You didn't she have was, a lot of help yeah. coming out. Hey, even in coming out the hospital, yeah. I would put it on moms because she was like, she and was overwhelmed. Yeah, she was like, I'm about to have all these sweet babies, you know what I'm saying? And then and we didn't have that help. help. And, then, and with the corona, then we went into the hospital. Uh -huh. and then we went homeless as well. I was in the hospital. I was in the rush in. You know what I'm saying? And, and they don't provide men as much help as they no, do they women. Don't. Yeah. No, they don't. They don't. Talk it. Talk. Speak it. They so didn't, they didn't, they didn't yeah. provide nothing, and I was going everywhere. I went on the news. I even went on the news. Yeah. Like, I need help, you know what I'm saying? Because her moms, you know, we all went to Duke Ellington with uh, David Chappelle and all, all a lot of guys. And then, along with um, Lowe's to play for Backyard, you know what I'm saying? He's my best I friend. Know, I, know, saw, you know what I was very, band, you I, know saw, know I was very, you know I was very sad. So you you also tried to get J uh, help from Dave Chappelle as well. Um, he just reached out to a mom. Okay. But I was reaching out to Ooh. other situations. Okay. So so yeah. I, when I when I heard out, I was poor. I was very very sad. And we're and we're still poor, but we still oh, live in the house. And thank God, we like still that. live in the house. Um, yeah. So when you grow up and have children. You want their mom tell, tell, to be tell, there? Tell what you want to do. You want to make sure that your children have yeah. a mom too? He boxes. He boxes uh, yeah, as well. Yeah. Yes. 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 He boxes. He so boxes. when I grow up, I, be, I want to be a football player and I want to make millions of dollars and share and do and share it out to all the homeless people in the world. Yes. <laughs> Growing up until the time that I started running the streets when I was 12, I had the need for a father. Not having one made me feel like I didn't have to take care of my children, if I was to have some. So I had mentally fallen into the absent father cycle. So I wanted to know how others from single parent families have viewed parenthood. Alright, how you want me to start? I'm going to say... Did you, did you have, like, a desire for a male figure in your life when you was young, growing up? I had it, and so, growing up I had an older brother, and his dad wasn't prominent in the picture. Um, I didn't know my father growing up, so I didn't know his name, I didn't know what the Joker looked like, 
the substitute for a father back then at an early age was my uncle. I remember my Uncle Timmy, I remember my Uncle Michael, my Uncle Stanley, and at different points they lived with us. So they were that substitute early on. So yeah, and I felt like I had a male person that would kind of fill in that void. Now, so they would all, you know how family is, you move apart, we used to live in a city, we moved to Virginia, you would see them more sparingly. That void became more prominent the less you saw them around. And then you would kind of feel like mom's is so low, there ain't nobody there. Um, so there was definitely that void early on. And sometimes that void would be filled, sometimes it would not be. I mean, it was kind of tough because my mother was basically she, I mean, she had two boys, so it was kind of, that's kind of hard raising boys and stuff like that. So it was more of us trying to find ourselves. So it was more like, you know, as young kids, you know, we all into everything. So it was more, we just trying to find ourselves. You know, it's a lot of kids out there trying to find themselves. We try to find ourselves, you know, trying to find a father figure. But we was always outside playing and stuff. You know, my mom always saying, hey, get in the house, this, this, that. So she was more of a discipliner, you know what I'm saying? She was more like, hey, do this, this, this. Sometimes we test the waters. So, um, I mean, she was amazing. I mean, she was everything, everything we wanted and stuff, but we was more lost on where's our father's at, who was our father, you know? And I was still wanted to find out what did he look like? You know, where did my name came from? Where did my, you know what I'm saying, me personally? You know what I'm saying? How did I come into this world? So, um, I had a lot of answers, you know. My grandmother and everybody, you know, try to, they knew where he was at. You know, it was a lot more to now that I know about him before when I was a kid because, you know, my mom had remarried and stuff and everything and it was more like we had in and out fathers, father figures, you know what I'm saying? So. Um, she fell in love with one person that actually stood, you know what I'm saying, stood with her. And it was kind of hard because we really didn't know of him. But as a person, it was just more in and out. You know, it was kind of hard and stuff or whatever. So, But it was more teaching us how to be strong for our mother and protect our mother. And then um, just me and my brother and stuff, you know, we was there for each other no matter what, you know. So did you feel, did you feel uh, a strong desire to have a father figure in your life? Uh, I say 50-50. Yeah. It was more, it was more trying to figure out where I came from. Yeah. It was more that, you know, you don't always have your pros and cons on, you know, where, why, you know what I'm saying, what happened. What did, mm -hmm. what did I do to, you know what I'm saying, deserve a father just disappear, have him, you know what I'm saying, what did he do to my father? A lot of a lot of boys is going to be overprotective because a lot of sometimes a lot of fathers are trying to come in the world and be like, oh yeah, hey, I'm your father after you didn't have me at 30 years old and stuff. You'd be like, okay. But that was my case too because I was in my, I believe in my 20s when I finally met my father. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. How did that affect you after finally finding uh, it was kind of it was kind of crucial because of the fact that I didn't call to him my father because of the simple fact that as a man you know you don't give up the miracle that you bring to this world you know that child in this world you don't give up on what you brought in this world and I believe that you know what I'm saying my father was had more stuff on his plate than you know that I feel that that was being a coward mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying because you know I'm I'm here trying to learn about my parents and stuff or whatever. And a lot of kids out here doing more stuff is crazy because they got one parent that's trying to take care of the bills, trying to take care of the things, you know what I'm saying, to keep their kids safe. And my, that's what my mom did, mm -hmm. you know. So she did, she was everything to us, you know what I'm saying. She was amazing. Even, you know, our aunts, you know, played a father and a mother figure role on all of us and stuff or whatever. So... Now that I see that, you know, he passed away and stuff and everything, it was more like I still had more answers, you know what I'm saying? Because he 
was gone. You know, now I found out that I used to stay with my father when I was a baby. Uh, so my mom get herself together and then I found out his sister named me and called me actually my full name and in the last, you know, well, I'm the third and I didn't know that because I wanted to go get renewed to get a copy of my birth certificate, my original birth certificate, it's the third mm. and I didn't know that. And my aunt, when I spoke to her, my father's uh, sister, I spoke to her and basically it was like, hey, you the third. You this, you know, you we named you, I named you, you this and that and all this other stuff and this and that. So it was bits and pieces still out there, you know what I'm saying? And I just wanted you to know that gave me goosebumps. Uh, when yeah. you told me it was the third yeah, yeah. because yeah. that 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 is emotional because yeah. not just you have another name, but yeah. even though your father wasn't there, he still gave you yeah. his name in the third, yeah. you know, that oh, yeah. And it, and it was creepy because, you know, at first I was like, this ain't me, you know, you got it wrong. She was like, no, I did, you the third. And then I seen little papers of, from the hospital and stuff that they like showed me, like pictures and all this other stuff. And I didn't know my father had another woman in his life. She was there, you know, raising me too as well. And then my mom came and it's like, no, I'm taking my baby. I'm gone, you know what I'm saying, and get out get out of DC in Maryland and so she was like nah we gotta get away from the bad life and stuff and try to build our own life and stuff whatever so it was it's hard and I'm talking to a sister now and my other aunt she's further out so I haven't talked to her and a lot of people don't want to talk to me because I look like my father it was pretty tough growing up without a father without my biological father I had a stepfather who came in about a few years after my father was locked up. So when I turned about eight, my stepfather came in the picture. But not having my biological father, that affected me a whole lot because no love is like your actual father's love. So, and I was missing that. Um, my stepfather, yeah, he was a real cool dude. He made sure that we, he took care of us, made sure my mom was good, but my dad, that was my best friend and still is. That's my guy. Um, so, and I was kind of disobedient towards my stepfather because he's not my dad. So it was like, you're not my dad. Like, you can't tell me what to do. I ain't got to listen to you. Which is not a good thing because he's the one that's actually taking care of me. Not my dad. Not my actual biological father. Yep. So, I, so my son is a... Uh... 10 months and I, I I don't care even if, 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 I, if I'm not with my wife we're still gonna be I'm being that, that in my, my child's life yeah. I have to be yeah every day I told him I'm gonna be the uh, you know how, how you have um come to the school what's it called teacher orientation with the kids oh yeah uh, parent teacher PTA. association I'm gonna be the president of the PTA I'm gonna be there <laughs> bringing the cupcakes like I'm gonna be involved yeah. that's me and me yeah so yep yeah I commend you for that man Thanks, cause, man. Thanks. cause I, and I have a couple cousins where they raised the children of other men. They got married to women who already had kids, right. and the men didn't want to take care of the kids. And my cousin, right? I said, man, you know what? That's a strong man to yeah, raise another man's children. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, yeah. that's yeah. very strong. Like right now, I have my nephew out here playing basketball. A woman cannot, I think a woman cannot raise a black male in a white world. Yeah. It can't. You, you, you can't. You can try your hardest, yeah. but it takes a man to beat him up but then tell them go to school. You're like you yeah. gotta have that love, hate bond with, with your child, and yeah, the man has to be in the child's life. And but doesn't have to be the father, be an uncle, a dad, grandfather, whoever, brother. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it takes a man to, to, to raise a man. Exactly. That's how I feel. And because I've had people that said that to me before that a woman can't really raise a boy to be a man. And with my experience. Once I was as tall as my mother. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> Same thing. She my mom, tell my me that now. Five foot. My dad is 6'3". 6'3". So I'm like, Mom, whatever. He's like, oh, really? I'm going to call your dad. Okay, now it, it changes. Yeah. But if she wasn't there, then, then my mom couldn't say that. So yeah. you're right. Yeah, yeah, that's a man. And and I'm not as tall, but his his mom, my sister is 5'10". Like, his dad is 6'2". So he's going to be tall. Yeah. And I'm like, listen, okay, how tall are you going to be? Yeah. I'm going to be the one that's going to discipline you and buy you shoes, put you in school. It's, it takes a man, though. It takes yeah. a man. So... Is his father in constant contact with him? So the issue with that is... But well, you don't have to get... No, 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 no. Real quick. Okay. They broke up and his dad's in South Carolina. 
Oh, South Carolina. So he sees him once a year. So yes, and yeah, he don't have his father exactly. now. Exactly. So you're like the surrogate. Yep. Um, As I said, my mother kept me and my brother fed and kept the utilities on. But not having the stylish clothes led to teasing. The teasing didn't bother me too much because there was nothing that I could do to buy better clothes. But it did bother me. When I was presented with the opportunity to make money so that I could have better clothes, I took it. What was that opportunity, you may ask? Becoming a drug dealer, selling crack cocaine. That's how many of us overcame poverty. But I wanted to know how other people dealt with poverty in a single parent environment, either as a child or as the parent. Well, the financial struggle with raising my daughter, it was learning to stay off the streets, first of all. I couldn't hustle no more. I had to find a different source of income, a more positive source of income. That's the hardest part. With no skills under your belt, that's not easy. You can't just walk up anywhere. I can't go to a mechanic shop like, hey, yo, I know how to work on the engine. I don't have no skills. It puts me in a position where I have to work minimum wage. So you gotta learn to shop different. You gotta learn to eat different. You gotta learn to dress different. Those are the hardest things in the world. You have to change your entire life financially because when you're used to having that band, that makes life very easy when you have that band. But when you don't have that no more, it's the most hurtful feeling in the world. Because when your child just wants something simple, can we just go to McDonald's? And you look at them and you just like, honestly, you looking, you thinking of your bank account, you thinking of your pockets. That seven, eight dollars can really hurt you. It really can. You know, I didn't get, I don't get, you know, any support, you know, from, I did get support, child support from Devin's father, but that was pretty much what he would give, so that wasn't enough money. But for Diallo, you know, I did the court thing, I can be transparent, I did the court thing and I'm still not getting anything. Um, so thankfully, um, you know, I always worked uh, stable jobs. I, I was with Kaiser Permanente for six years, um, but whether you're working full-time or not as a single parent, it's never enough because then you have your doctor bills, you have the dental bills, and with Diallo, he's very active, and you know, one time, like we went roller skating with the friends, and he fell. I remember that. And bust his two front teeth out his yeah. mouth, and we are still paying bills because that's a continuous thing that he has to continue to get taken care of until he becomes an adult. Yeah. Those were his permanent teeth. Uh -huh. um, my father is there, but he's remarried, so the it dyna dynamics has changed a little yeah. bit. But if I say I need something, then, but, you know, I'm pretty much on my own with it. I have high doctor bills because I live with, with a a chronic illness and Diallo has really bad asthma. He has really bad eczema to the point where he has been placed on uh, uh, injection every two weeks. So my, my bills for medical is very high. So I don't, you know, get that type of um, help with that. So, um, you know, I started my own business in hopes I, I own a, a um, jewelry business and a uh, I launched my own website as well um, to try to help to because my doctor is saying that I probably need to 
stopped working and go out on disability. And that was a really, really big letdown for me. Um, he said that a couple of months ago. So I prepared myself to going out because Medicare and all that stuff doesn't pay for much. So right now I'm left with Diallo being in school for the last four years. Oh, he's in high school. He's in high school. Um, and because of my illness, um, I'll go ahead and say it on camera, I don't care. I have rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease. And what it does is it causes you to become bedridden and possibly deformed. Um, so I take all kinds of medications. I'm on a, a, a every four weeks I get an infusion. Um, so I'm down a lot. Yeah. And I'm not able to always work like I used to. So, you know, I have an intermittent FMLA through my job that helps me to take those days off. So, guess what? That's less income. Yeah, oh. Okay. With most cases of single parenthood, the biggest issue with not the biggest but one of the biggest things that's a physical issue with single parenthood is poverty how did the poverty affect you so it was bad like i remember like my kids now i constantly won't make french toast they want pancakes i ain't eating no damn pancakes because it was the cheapest thing you could buy back in the day. And I can tell you right now, a box of Aunt Mama was 45 cents a box, and all you had to do was add water. The syrup was like 60 some cents. So there were times where all we ate, you remember this, Bisquick biscuits, and you put syrup on it, or you had pancakes. Um, you wanted a sweet, then you got a loaf of bread, threw some cinnamon and sugar on it, toasted it. It's bad, but when it's all you knew, it's not horrible. Like, if I had to go from where I'm at now to then, I'd probably be devastated. I'd probably be out on the streets robbing people to not be in that. But when it's all you know, then it's not so bad. I'll tell you this, it's made me how I am today to where um, I got tennis shoes that I've had for six years because I ain't used to having nothing nice. I'll take care of that I'm, I'm still taking the shoestrings off, putting them in a cup of bleach, let it sit overnight, take the with a washcloth or paper towel, clean it out. There are things from it that you've adapted in your adult life because you don't forget it. I won't eat no oodles and noodles no more. I ain't eating no oodles and noodles. <laughs> you can have that, young. Yeah? It's all those cheap things that was all you could have to fill your belly are things now that I'm just like, I can't eat that no more. I just, I overdid it at a young age not having like you have power but no water water but mm -hmm. no power you didn't have a wardrobe of clothes you had a couple outfits and it was damn sure hand-me-downs or the thrift store i remember going to the thrift store and being happy like i was at macy's but then when i got older i remember walking in the thrift store and feeling that shame like i should not be wearing these clothes but you start humbling yourself when your mom starts explaining that's all she can do. So then you don't feel so bad. You feel bad for her that she can't do more. Um, so the poverty part is, is an accurate depiction because if, I'm not saying if you're a, a child growing up without one of your parents and the other one is struggling to provide for you, the, the parent is not struggling to provide for you. They can provide for you pretty nice. That absence is still going to be somewhere in that hurt. But I agree, the poverty part is what makes the situation that much worse. It makes it more critical. Um, using Medicaid to go to the hospital, not having a primary physician. Um, being embarrassed to walk into a store and buy food stamps, or buy stuff with food stamps. And even they got a good, they got a car. They can be in the line and not so embarrassed. You just swipe and go. I think I over provide and compensate because I remember not having. So that's one thing that I can say that is prominent. But like, they go to an, they get an eye exam every year. 
I ain't never get a nice. <laughs> when I was younger, I never really got looked at until like I went into the juvenile system for little crimes. And when people would look <laughs> you over before they bringing you in, and I'd be like, man, some of my first physical <laughs> was going through the system. They see they got a primary physician, know their birth date, their this, their illnesses, their problems. So I look at them and look at where I was at, and I just see they have a lot better opportunities and a lot better upbringing because of they they don't have that void that we had. Thou shalt not steal, but I will to eat. You didn't want to go in a store and get caught shoplifting. But imagine going into a store and stealing a can of tuna or something small like a, I didn't even like sardines. I'd run in and grab a can of sardines because they were tiny, run out and you wind up eating and you like, man, I know I grabbed the joint with oil in it. <laughs> joint be nasty. But, like, you didn't have, so it was what you had to do. And when I got older, I had a little brother. So, I knew how I had it when he was that age. And I was like, man, I am not going to have this little homie going through what I went through. So, there were times where I did things because I just wanted to make sure he ate. And he had some, and even if it was nothing, it, it's funny. Like man, you walk in my refrigerator now. There's apple juice. There's the tea you saw. There's bottles of water. When you open the refrigerator out of habit, just to check what's there, and it ain't nothing there. That's some. Is you're hungry and you're opening it for a reason. But then when you scan it and see it ain't nothing in here, I can make something. You'd have butter. <laughs> You'd open that joint and have butter and like a whole bunch of nothing else and be like, man, ain't nothing that I can make in this joint. And for some damn reason, we always had baking soda. But what was you trying to keep fresh when there was nothing in there? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So like that really was a prominent thing. It was it was like the food stuff. And I look at other things too, like bathing wise. You would have the cheapest, most harshest soaps, that cheap soap. And you didn't have an abundance of washcloths and top. Like, there were other things, too, that just made you be like, man, I go to my friend's house and stay the night. You open up like a joint, he got a linen closet, and he can grab clean washcloths and this and that. They got a washer and dryer in their house. You got to go upstairs with quarters and use a joint the nasty shoes and washing clothes without soap powder using this detergent like there were different things that you had to do to get by you get to be a, a older young man you need deodorant how do you go buy deodorant you can't buy it with food stamps so there's a lot of other things in the middle of that poverty class that doesn't really get that light on it because some of the things are smaller than the most prominent thing and the most prominent thing is food. You were probably like just above it? Uh, I would say middle class. Middle class? Yeah, middle class. Okay. Yeah, okay. I would definitely say middle class. I mean, it wasn't always great, you know. At some, at some point in time, you know, she, would, she wasn't working and we did have, have to get food stamps. And you know, I would have to go to the grocery store to get the food, and I'm like, what the fuck? I'm using food stamps. Oh my God, man, what's going on? Embarrassed. Yeah, just like, oh God, man, I gotta use these food stamps. What's going on? But, weather that storm, you yeah. know, uh, and back then you didn't have cell phones, so the phone get cut off. Damn, I gotta yeah. make sure I got enough change to run, you know, go to the corner. Yeah. I mean, go, you know, go to the phone oh, booth. They use that, you know, going through that kind of thing, you know. Yeah. So you had your trials and tribulations, but, you know. Caring for children as a single parent is difficult. If that wasn't enough, consider the time when they're not in school. During a couple of my interviews, I learned exactly how much of an impact school has on children and single parents. Back in the day, if you went to school, it was because you wanted to eat breakfast and lunch. After I ate breakfast and lunch, most of the time I was gone. 
some of the teachers asked me why I'm skipping, I would tell them why, and they would just be like, okay, well, there's nothing that I can really do for you. Nowadays, you got schools that provide the breakfast, the lunch, and they want to give you snacks. And some schools even want to give you meals to take home and stuff. There's different things that are out there. So, like, when I look at it from my perspective to, like, me having kids and them, it's apples and oranges because they don't have some of the things that I had because I make a decent amount of money at my job so I can provide pretty decent. Um, their moms kick some bread, so that better enables me to provide. It wasn't nobody kicking our parents' money. We didn't have male figures handing women money saying, here's for my kids. And you also didn't have women going to try to get child support back in the day. For some reason, that little spot right there, broads just were like, okay, well, this is my kid and carry on. Nowadays, it's different. When you're not kicking in or helping out, the woman is really smart and savvy to know, okay, then I'll do something because you got to help me provide for this child that is yours. Weekends were the roughest and summers were even rougher because at least when school year was you had two meals you could bank on In the summer there wasn't no meals there and you was like man And I look at it from my standpoint of now my grocery bill was set at a certain amount And then once COVID shut the schools down and the kids were here all day I started realizing I now have that summer grocery budget because they ain't at school grabbing a meal here, grabbing a meal there. They're here all day. That budget gets different. In the summertime, it, it just wasn't there. And I'm not even saying it wasn't there in abundance. There were times it was not there. See, that's how I learned my hamburger helper game. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this was my thing. When school is in, like you said, it's, it's very simple. You go to school, you get breakfast, lunch, snack. You good. You just come home, you get a little snack, you get dinner. It don't work like that during the summertime. You got to do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So you got to learn how to budget. So hamburger helper, I know you can eat for two nights off of that. That's $2. I can going to get a 79 cent pack of turkey meat. A box of hamburger helper, whip that up. That's at least two meals. Okay. What well, about breakfast and lunch? Okay, you gotta go get eggs, you get pancakes. At, at the bare minimum, you gotta get cereal and milk, oatmeal, something like that. It's, they're home all day, they're constantly eating, constantly eating. It's non stop. So, it, it, it's a financial struggle when you're dealing with that every single day. And then when you have no help, you know what I'm saying, come like, yo, okay, here goes some plates, here goes some food, here go this, here go that. Nah. Single parents, you do it on your own. Every single day. And I'll be honest, it's a lot of days you just want to quit. It's a lot of days. Throughout all the years, my daughter's 11. I'm not, I'm not even gonna fake and say it wasn't so many times I just wanted to quit. I just be like, you know what, I can't do it. But then, like I said, it's the moments. It's the moments in between them pics. The moments in between them videos. The moments between everything that nobody else sees that pushes me to go on. So even when I'm sitting there, and this, I've sat in tears, crying, literally crying. Like, I don't know what to do next. I don't know how I'm going to push forward. It's those moments that pop in my head. Or it be something random. My daughter will randomly just come in the room and just give me a hug. For no reason. At least to me, it's no reason. She don't realize what she's doing. But that one hug gave me my world back. Them chance, all the time she just randomly come in there and say, just give me a hug, say I love you daddy. That's my world. You gave me hope, you gave me inspiration, you gave me energy. I 
I'm really at the tipping point. I'm standing on the edge. I'm ready to jump. And she pulls me back every single time. That's my inspiration in life. But I ain't going to think like it's not hard, especially when it comes to financial struggles. That's when you really on that edge. And you be like, you know what? I know where I can make some money. I know I, hey, I know what I can do. I know what I'm used to. I know what I grew up around. I know who I am. I know what I, I, I know what I'm capable of. I can go make some money. But then, think, go out there and do that, and lose what you have. For what? Mm. That's something you gotta think of. It's it's a struggle every single time, especially in a financial game. When you can't afford to put food on your table, or the school hits you and say, oh, well, she needs a new uniform, or she come home and got holes in the bottom of her shoes, and you can't buy them, that hurts. That hurts me to my soul. Wow, that's a question. Um, I can easily answer that. <laughs> That would be, you know, school uniforms, every, I'm like, oh, August is here, uniforms again. Um, and again, my wonderful parents, they would step in and they would handle that part. You know, this is, you know, talking to, you know, um, single parents and, you know, people, even people with who are suffering from illnesses and different things. It's okay to have a day or a moment where you are feeling down or feeling, I call it a pity party day for myself. Mm -hmm. I'm whining. I'm just, oh, and now my son is so funny. He's like, okay, why did you say it like that, mom? You're just whining today. I say, yeah, I think today is a, at, he'll say, at home day. Mm -hmm. I'll just stay home and make it a day of reading or, you know, uh, watching a funny movie, a comedy or something, definitely would cheer you up. Mm -hmm. um, but it's okay to have that moment in time, in that day. But the next day, you have to get up. You have to get up, get moving, okay, get your mind together, hey, Okay, I had a bad day yesterday. I'm going to get moving today. It's not really that bad. And just get yourself moving. Because if you continue to allow yourself to stay in that place, yeah. you're doomed. Yeah. You're doomed. It can turn into clinical depression. depression. I'm a medical profession for 26 years. Yes, it can definitely turn into a bigger problem. Yeah. So you have to find other ways, such as exercising, walking. Me, sometimes I just tell my son, I need you to put that music on for me. He knows all the old school go-go. <laughs> I'd be like, he'd be like, go for it. He has a great time watching me. Mm. And he's like, wow, that must have been great back in that time. Yeah. I said, yeah, it was great back in that time. And so um, it's great exercise for me. It releases those endorphins. So whatever it is you enjoy doing, whether it's walking, for me turning my music on, um, those, that's the time when I'm feeling kind of funky and I need some help. You know, up here I'm kind of down. That music, that or earth, wind, and fire, whatever it is, it just, woo, puts me <laughs> in the mood. Yeah. So um, I'll even get on my gazelle, which is like a uh, elliptical swinger thing and try to do some working out. That always releases those endorphins. So that's something else that I would say, you know, um, stay active, um, get out the house, take a walk around the neighborhood if you have to, look at nature, that kind of thing, listen to your music, you know, um, 
happiness is something that you have to choose to do. And so if you know yourself well enough and you feel yourself slipping into that deep part, that dark part of yourself, because I had that's happened to me many times, I know how to pull myself back up. And those are some of the few activities and roller skate. Yeah, I know. Roller skate. <laughs> With, yeah. with the friends, roller skate. Yeah. What else can you do? That's an awesome, awesome thing to do. It's a great atmosphere. It's a clean, wholesome atmosphere. Um, it's wonderful. So I just encourage people just keep moving and try to find something that you enjoy doing. And then playing in jewelry. My gorgeous jewelry that oh yes that that works for me and then to be able to make it into a business is even better yeah so that's my story as i said not having my father led to poverty which led me to selling crack cocaine like most drug dealers i ended up going to prison we're not all affected in the same way so i wanted to know how others were affected by having only one parent or by being the only parent. So, what would you say your effect without a father had on you with relationships? I didn't know the difference whether a person was genuine or sincere. I, I always thought that um, things that people would tell me, especially men, were the truth because I didn't know. So I didn't know that um, they were playing games or anything like that. Did you feel like they, um, that you was trying to substitute the love that you should have gotten from your father with the relationships you were having with men? Yes. Um, pretty much I was trying to look for love and affection with guys. I mean, not a lot of different men, but just with guys, the love that I should have felt from my father. And do you feel like you're still affected by, even presently, whatever your relationship with your father may be, and even from the past of him not being around, do you feel like you're still affected by that lack of involvement in your life from your father? Yes. Tremendously, yeah. It's it's more um, noticeable now because I'm older and through my life experiences, I know a lot more things. I've learned a lot of things, so I can see the difference that it's made in my life. And I wish that he was there for me growing up. I don't want to just have a child with anybody. I want to have some, my, a child with someone who I know is going to be there actively. Even if we don't end up together, which I always want to end up with their father, I mean be with their father, but I still want them to be actively in their lives. Um, I've seen a lot of girls who have grown up promiscuous, um, looking for the love that they should have got shown from their father in different men because they felt like they were trying to fill the void and um, it doesn't really affect them as much as they're younger because they don't really understand until they become of age, probably about a teenager, and then they know that, okay, my father's not here. And then it's really too late once you get become a grown adult. And that's when all this stuff, everything starts happening. I don't have, I don't feel that experience for me because even though that wasn't my father, I was raised in a strict environment and it was two parents there, even though it wasn't my dad, but it, it, it was a strict environment. And I'm going to say that my dad is very strict as well, very family oriented. So I was raised in a family with two parents, although one wasn't mine and I felt a lot of times that I was on the outside because I knew that he had a problem with my mother telling me that he wasn't my dad, which was wrong. But 
my choices and the way that I think and how my life is, I mean, you know, it's a family in a, a family or oriented way of the way I think. My situation was tough, but my husband grew up without his father. And a lot of and seeing his mother with different men and making different bad choices, and she dealt with that. His his story is your story. His story is your story. No father, but he wanted different for our children. But because of that, his way of thinking, you can tell by how he thinks, it affects him. So him growing up without his father made him try to be more there for his children. And not because my husband was in the streets. He said the streets raised him and he started selling drugs and doing all kind of illegal things. But once I had this child, he wanted to be, he didn't, he didn't want to do that no more. He wanted to be a father and he wanted to be different and he wanted to be there for his child. So the kids changed him. And he, he has family values, but he just, he wanted to be different than his dad. But he's broken, really. He really is broken because of not having his dad. And he had him, but it, he wasn't there all the time. And when he did get time with him, it was, he was abused. He was abused. And, and so was the stepmother and the, some of the other children. It's mainly because she doesn't have those female tendencies. Like, she takes after me a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. So, it's more of a boyish, you know, tomboy type thing going on. But also, she... It's not like we going to the nail salon. She doesn't know about that. Going to the hair salon, stuff like that. She doesn't really take on that. She'd rather come out, play football, basketball, stuff like that. So, honestly, I would say when I do meet a female, I see her trying to mimic what another female does. So, it's kind of, you know, that's on two sides of the fence type thing. So, it's... She really wants that female part, but she knows it's not going to come from me. Yeah. It's impossible. You know, I'm going to be me regardless. And if she's going to act like me, she wants to dress like me, baggy clothes. She don't like tights. She don't want no dresses. Nothing like that. She don't want to go do feminine things. So I think it definitely affects because, like I said, when I meet other women... I can see off the break, she's just like, okay, it's kind of like that. Is this my new mommy? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, she's not asking that question, but that's the energy I get from her. So she wants a female figure in her life. It's just, I have to make sure that it's comfortable with me. You know what I'm saying? We got to be all on the same page. So it's kind of hard just... I think she really wants a female figure in her life, but I just, I'm not willing to just bring anybody in just to fill that role. Yeah, and it's just like I was saying earlier, like, uh, boys need a man in their life. Yeah. Girls need a woman in their life. You know, the, the, the male and the female raising the child really bring different characteristics to shape that person, you know? Like little boys, it's 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 hard for a woman to completely understand what it's like to be a little boy. Yeah. But a man does, in the same way, vice versa. It's hard for a man to completely understand what it means to be a little woman, a little girl. It's definitely hard. It's that's one of the most hardest things is trying to understand where her mindset is. Yeah. It's like I'm catching on as we go along, but. 
I started teaching myself to pay more attention. Because it could be something very tiny to me, but it's huge to her. Yeah, but when you're dealing with a little boy, you feel more on that same level. Like, it's something. This is small. You just fell and cut your knee. That's, that ain't nothing. A little girl, nah, something. I'm scarred for life. I am scarred for life. This is everything in my world. You got to understand that's how they feel. That's how they think. I'm not saying that's for all females, but, you know, just looking at male to female ratio, mm -hmm. that little scratch is either a scratch for a little boy or this is the worst wound ever for a little girl. Yeah. So you got to know how they looking at it and you got to understand and you got to be on that level with them and find out like, okay, why are you acting like this? And like we said, I just started, we just started into that cycle, that monthly bill mm. cycle. <laughs> so she come to me screaming, daddy, daddy. Huh? And I'm like, What's wrong? It's just a, it's just a party. It's just, you just came on your mother. It's okay. No, that is blood. I'm like, yeah, okay, now I to think about it. Okay, I don't bleed on a monthly, so. <laughs> 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 and look, plus it ain't my first time, you know. It's, yeah. Look, I'm thinking of it like it's natural. But in her mind, this is world changing. Like, you don't went into outer space. This is a place I don't belong. Yeah. Like, that's that's how you got to look at it. Like, this is whole a whole nother story going on right now. We done switched libraries. We ain't flipped the page in a book. We switched the whole library. So you have to look at it that way, especially dealing with a little girl. At least in my book. Yeah. Some people have it a lot harder than me. And I noticed that. Like, I'm... And single dad groups and I notice what they go through and the stuff they have to deal with on a daily basis I don't really have to do that because I feel as though what I did when she was younger already prepared her as she got older so she's not as emotional she looks at things differently like we don't worry about this is the first time in my life I ever worried about how a person looks at me like, the very first time ever in my life, I'm worried about how somebody looks at me. Everybody else out in this world, I don't give a damn how you look at me. This is my life. But when it comes to my child, it's 100% guarantee I care everything about how she looks at me. I'm her prime example. Because I'm a single father, because her mother's not around, her reaction, her responses, her personality, her attitude, her habits, it all comes from me. So I have to care about how she looks at me. That's the most important thing in life right now. Everything you're learning right now is coming from me. It did in a way, like at some point, so moms was strong. So, she was trying her best to fill both spots by giving the tough love and then the mom love. Um, but you could tell those coping mechanisms because at an early age, I started to realize there were too many of those mom traits that I was adapting to. You saw it earlier with the spider. I was not going to stop looking for that spider until I found it and killed it. Right now, if I see a spider, I am jumping and running. Mom's back in the day, we'd be walking. A bee pop up, she'd run. In my mind, you're supposed to run. So some of those womanly things that you were only around and subject to started to be what you adhered to and would follow. So then when you go out and about and you hanging out with the guys, you would see different things. Like Uncle Timmy didn't run from no dang bee. Uncle Timmy be like, man, get out of here and make jokes. Man, look, let your look like a raisin and be laughing and you looking at him like, okay, well, he ain't running from that. He's in command of that. And you see the presence and you see how the posture is and the tone 
And it's something in that man voice when you're a child that just makes you want to listen. And it makes you want to go to it. More so in the absence of that male role model. So, yeah. So now enter Joe. So what was that like? So, <laughs> man, so when he comes into the picture, it's the roughest thing because I was a single parent for a short time and I started to realize as a single parent a different perspective and it's having a young woman come into my life knowing I have kids. As a child, this man coming into the life, when you're young, it was open-armed, welcomed, and you wanted that. And it was cool. The problem with Joe is, and that was my dad, like, in hindsight. It was the only male that ever called me his son. Like, I was not his by blood, but he accepted me. Unlike some people that I've seen, I accepted his hard discipline because that was the only father I knew. Had I been a stepson that had a father, his harsh discipline would have been, I don't like this guy. But since it was all I knew, I like open armed embraced that. Now, the bad thing about Joe is you had this street dude. So, he was doing a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want kids subject to, man. And he was just heavily in the streets. This dude didn't work a job. He didn't show you a male role model that went to work and brought home the bacon. This dude went out and hustled and came home and had groceries and food. So you knew of it because you knew the kind of people he had around us. So we went from having no male in the house to like seven males in the house because when these dudes that he was cool with are coming out the halfway house, he giving them a place to stay at our crib. And these jokers are telling us, you gotta die for your respect. They giving us prison terminology as children that it was just destroying our little <laughs> feeble minds. But at the same time, there was that eagerness of hanging out with men. They're outside working on a car. You remember your mom had something break and was calling people and looking for help to fix it. Something breaks now, you got this man here and he got friends and they out there working on it. So you've got to see that flip side of it. There were positives, there were negatives. Um, one of the negatives was he was constantly incarcerated. I, I remember being at my grandmother's house and watching him on the news get locked up. And my pops Joe comes in the picture. Well then now you got he's constantly gone again. He's incarcerated, so you got somebody, but now he ain't there. Then you go visit him, and you got the heartache of, I can go see this dude, and I can put my arms around him, but I can only do that once a week, and then he's gone again. So then this dude breaks out, he pops up, <laughs> he's constantly back in, constantly back out. He never really gets himself straight, and but he did fill that void. I at least was able to at that point, like when friends are talking about, you know, where's your dad at? He's locked up. I had some name to claim that I had a father. I, there was an existence of somebody. So it, it was awesome, but then it had its heartaches in there too, that you had that at early age, I had to start realizing you had something, but you did not have it. You were property of the can't even say the state because DC wasn't a state, but he was property of the correction. Something came to my mind because you just mentioned how you used to ask questions and then you just got quiet. Because I remember, you know, when I used to come down here to see you guys a lot, you never spoke. You hardly ever spoke. And I used to be like, what's wrong with Marvin? Why doesn't he ever talk? And that was when you was in that phase because you weren't getting answers to your questions where yeah. you was like, you just went silent. I think it was that one time me and you, we was, I remember I was always, I always loved the music. And I think, uh, you know, you and my brother, we always, he always tried to get a lot of that stuff out of me. Like, hey, what's wrong with this and that? I think everywhere I would go when I was little, I was always quiet because of 
the answers I was trying to get. You know, I remember when I was a little kid, when I went to the 7-Eleven to call for my father. And, you know, they would tell me he's coming and he don't show up. You know what I'm saying? When my grandfather passed away, which is his father, I was supposed to win with him, he never showed up. And it's just like, the more I just realized what type of person he was, it was just like when we, I started listening to music and stuff or whatever, and music just got me just, like that was the only thing that actually had me say a couple words and that was it, like the ragamuffin. You know what I'm saying? I still listen to that joint, you know? Now I listen to Kenny G, play that joint for my kids when I rock them to sleep and stuff or whatever. It's more like, you know what I'm saying, when it's deep, when you don't have that part of your life that you're trying to figure out. Sometimes it'd be too late because your father be already gone. You know what I'm saying? So when you get up that age, you get to that point where you like, look, I'm not gonna be him. You know what I'm saying? This is my kids. I want my kids to see everything. This this big heart person, but I'm more of a big teddy bear. I'm a, I'm a hovering, and these are my kids. This is my Bible. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to be in the church. My church is my kids. My church is my wife and my life. You know what I'm saying? So I want to be that good father and not give up on them. You know? So it was, I don't know, man. It, he made me quiet. You know what I'm saying? Because he didn't have... He wasn't there to give me them answers. He wasn't there to take me to games. He wasn't there to see, you know what I'm saying, me shining, you know what I'm saying, in my own, in my own, this is my name. I'm doing this, and it's like I'm making y'all proud. So I'm saying, my brother was there. My cousins was there, you know what I'm saying? All of us there in that one circle, we talking about what we're going to be in life. He didn't choose it for us. He didn't give us that different options. So it was just us giving us the options on what we want to be in life. I wanted to be a DJ. My brother wanted to be, you know what I'm saying, basketball player, whatever the case may be, cousin wanted to do photography and all that other stuff. So it was more, everybody had their dreams, man. We was all in the room, and everybody had their dreams. Yeah. So, I don't know, man. It's, it's just, you know, sometimes we had to pick each other up, you know? Yeah. All uh, right, that's good. I appreciate it, man. There we go. Something you you said a few seconds ago as far as you know the fathers not being present, man. Yeah. I'm driving, I see you know females pushing strollers by yeah. themselves, got two kids or whatever, ranging in age, you know. Yeah. And it's like, man, okay, it could be raining or whatever is going on, you know, with the climate and stuff. Uh, and and it's a thing of you say it's generational and all of that. And you know, one of my things growing up in DC, uh, in a single parent uh, household, my mother and I, is um, you know just seeing it firsthand. A single mother. And some friends had, some of my friends had uh, come from the same background. A mother raising one, two, three kids and stuff like that. And you know, for me, it was I vowed when I was little. You know, when I started asking my mother, you know, about my father and all of this, you know, about him and just coming up with even, I was little and thinking, man, when I get my chance to be a father, there's no way I'm going to not be in my kid's life. There's no way in the world I'm, I'm not, you know, I, you know, not be there for my kid. Not having my father, it still affects me till this day. And... I think it affects me more now, sometimes, than it did when I was younger, at, at, at times. Like birthdays, special occasions, I really feel it like, damn, my dad not here. And then it's crazy because he hasn't been a part of special occasions for 26 years. Like, So you would think that you become used to it, but as time go on, it starts to hurt more and more and more. Especially like with my sisters, they really miss them. So, and when they always talking about them, it, it saddens me, me, knowing that we all missing a piece of our, a piece of the puzzle that we all needed growing up and now. And like when I had my kid, my dad don't get out of jail. Like my kid will never know their grandpa as a free citizen, as a free person they will only know him in a jumpsuit so that that definitely crossed my mind and everything like that um 
and just somebody to hang out with. I don't always want to hang out with my friends. Sometimes I'd be like, damn, I wish my pop was home. I would love to hang out with my pop, go on vacations with my pop. Just do son and father and son things. Sit down, watch a basketball game. Freaking go to a car show, all types of stuff. Um, I miss that. And I'm missing something I never witnessed or experienced, but you still miss it. And even going back as a kid, like when you watch TV and you see like the the kids and they growing up with their dad, like the Huxtables and all of that, yo, they dad did everything with them. And in the black community, we fall too many of us fall short of not being able to experience that father, that actual, your biological father being around, which hurts everybody. Even though some people act like, oh, I don't need my dad. That's that's bullcrap. It, everybody need their father. I don't care because it takes two people to make a child, so it takes two people to raise a child. So, and we try to dismiss the man so much in this society well, especially in a black community, we try to dismiss the man so much that make it feel like he's not needed, which is false. So that's something that really needs to change. With all the negativity that has been said, there's a glimmer of hope. Statistics show that single parenting is on the decline. Why not do something to help end the cycle? Support unmarried couples with children talk to the younger generation. Give them the knowledge and advice that they need. Maybe your words and actions could make a difference. One day, there will be no more single parenthood. Doesn't matter how you flip the man, you still see the bread. Doesn't matter how you flip the man, you still see the bread. Doesn't matter how you flip the man, you still see the bread. Yeah.